Hi everybody, I am going to uh, go through a very quick walkthrough of how to make a diagram like this uh, using the template that I'm going to send you guys. So this is for people at Adafruit. I don't really mean for this to be public. I don't care if you share it, but I'm, I'm not going to spend any time on making this a good video. Um, I did offer and I, I kind of did make this type of diagram based on the old ones that we had from pig x8 hxx whatever it was um i took that and replicated it in inkscape and i to do that i ended up making a template that had some features that made it easy and what i'd like to do is to make the one for the uh, the m4 make the one for the gamer and the badge because they kind of need to be there uh, but then I don't want this as a long-term job. <laughs> um, so I thought I would walk through how to use this template to do it pretty easily. It's not that hard. Uh, and then I'll start walking you through like doing the NRF uh, 52840, but I'm not going to do all of that here. I'm just going to kind of show you how you do it. So uh, right here, what you're looking at is a diagram in Inkscape. I assume you guys know what Inkscape is. It's an SVG editor. Uh, it's free. It's kind of like GIMP for vectors. It's very good. It's very stable. It's actually what my day job is based on. Um, so I spent a lot of time in it, which is why I know how to do this stuff. Um, it is good. It is deep. That's my day job. Somebody gave me $36. How about that? Um, it is very deep. It has a significant learning curve. There are some great uh, Inkscape um, uh, webinars or it's a screen screencasts of, of uh, Inkscape stuff. So I'm not going to show you all of how to use this. I'm going to assume that you kind of know Inkscape and I'm just going to show you some tips. Okay. Uh, if you take a look at uh, Inkscape, it's set up with the feather in the middle and then it's got all this information on every one of the pins. Now, uh, this is different for every pin and the information on here is based again on the older diagrams for the M0. But I kind of want to show you um, how I made this manageable uh, and how I would recommend that you go ahead and modify these. So every one of these chevrons, these uh, parallelograms here uh, that you see, like the, the DAC0, DAC1, uh, these show the circums. Uh, every one of these is actually a group uh, of the parallelogram, the rounded parallelogram and the, um, and the text. And I've got this set up so that if I needed to move this down here, you'll see it will it will really try to snap back into the right spot and automatically be lined up. And that really, that like totally saves your butt because you're not doing alignment all the time. You're able to just move things around. Um, and that's true, like if you wanted to make a, a duplicate of this and then move it down here, it will just drop into the spot and very nicely stay aligned, okay? Uh, to do that, there's really one trick that I use here. It's kind of something I do a lot. Um, uh, but it really works. Uh, you'll notice that if I turn off the um, the grid, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, now I can kind of move this anywhere. Uh, but if the grid is on, then um, it will stay aligned. And what it's actually aligning to, it is taking the bounding box of this object, this rectangle you see right here, and I have it set so that the center of the bounding box is always going to try to snap to a grid point. So you'll see there it does, and there it goes down. And then all I had to do was to make these sized so that they exactly fit within, um, within one or a couple of boxes. So this was four across uh, and two down, minus a little bit of space. So that's all done in the, in the, in the template, so you don't have to worry about that. But basically, um, what you do have to do is you have to make sure that your grid is turned on and that the right snapping is, is turned on. So let me kind of show you how to do that because it's not necessarily going to, it's not going to be set this way when you open the file. This is the zoom in of the top of the bar um, of, of Inkscape. And you'll see this very top bar here is the, uh, the snapping toolbar. If you don't see this, I think you can turn it on by, yeah, you're, you can't see it in here, but there's a show hide and it will, it'll turn this on. Uh, but I think it's on by default. It shows how things snap. So the first one completely turns on and off snapping. Okay, you want it on. The second one lets it, tells you how it controls uh, snapping to the bounding box. And by default, it's gonna be on corners. Uh, you don't want that here. You don't want it to try and snap to the corners. 
you only want it to snap to the center of the bounding boxes. Uh, this is how it snaps to things like nodes um, of, of a path and things like that. You want those off. Uh, you also want other points turned off. You don't want like text anchors and stuff to start try snapping. Uh, you do want the grid on, and I have it turned on for guides. There are no guides in this in this uh, template, but if you have them, snapping to guides is a good thing too. Uh, and so this is really how you want to be set up to use this. You want to have snapping turned on, but only for the center of the bounding boxes. If you do that, um, you will you will get exactly. Uh, what you see here, which is that as you move these cells around, uh, they will properly find their, their home. So it'll drop right in there. And if you're a little off, it will push it back for you. Okay. Uh, obviously undoes control Z and it's your friend. Uh, so the other kind of important things for you to know about Inkscape, um, this is a group. Like for example, over here, this right here is a group, this 14 a zero. It is actually a group of four cells. In fact, if you look at, uh, underneath me, it'll it'll tell you that there are uh, there is a purple per, per, uh, parallelogram, a green parallelogram that's rounded differently, and two text pieces. Um, it's very easy to think that if you want to manipulate the text in here or change a color, that you need to ungroup it. And then you need to move things around um, like this one at a time. Let's ungroup it again. There you go. And now you can get to the individual elements. So in Inkscape, that's absolutely not true. It's probably the, one of the most useful things to know about is that if I want to get to anything inside of a group, for example, if I want to move just this A0 text, okay, or edit it or change the color, if I hold down the control key, it will actually click into the deepest thing that it finds. Okay, so right there, it just went all the way into the group, ignored the grouping, and just found the first thing that, that it got, which was the A0. If I click here, it's going to get the green section. Here, it's going to get the purple one. Um, these are all, this is just a really good thing to know about because when I let go and click outside, I haven't modified the group. I haven't moved anything. And what it lets you do is to go in and say, okay, um, I want to change these two kind of peachy things to blue. Okay. Uh, I don't need to ungroup. I don't need to dig in or anything else. I just control click on that piece and I'll set it to blue. Okay. If I control click on this one, right? Oops. Sorry. I'm looking up top there right here. Uh, I can say blue and now they're blue and I didn't change it. They're still grouped. They're still going to move together. Right? So if I click up here, I can still move it. It'll still snap. Everything is still good. I'm still going to undo it. Uh, but it lets you get into things that are grouped very quickly, make a change, and move on. The final thing you kind of need to know is how the text tool works. Over here on the left, it says create and edit right above my head over there. It says uh, create and edit text uh, objects. If you click that, uh, you can go and you can tap and start typing. Uh, that will work. Um, we don't want to do that. Oops. Okay. So, um, what we want to do is when you're holding the text thing, what you'll notice is that if you go over any existing text cell, regardless of grouping or how deep it is, it automatically puts you inside of that. And so if I click here and I want to change this isn't a in five, it's a in two, I can click here and now I'm inside of that. And I can say that's a in two. Again, I haven't, um, I haven't ungrouped anything. I haven't changed anything. Um, it, uh, it just let, it goes directly into the text cell. I think that's probably most of what you need. Uh, if you're using Circoms, um, and this is a, a superscript here, I will tell you that it gets, it gets confused. The best thing you can do on, uh, on these, so if you go in and you said you want to change this, this zero to a one, uh, It'll do it, but it'll un, un uh, superscript it. So then you got to go back and you got to resuperscript it. And you can, you can highlight it and hit superscript, and that'll work. Uh, but what I just find is it's easier uh, when you go into one of these, click into it like this, right? Like that. Go to the end, type what you want, zero colon zero, whatever it is, and then just delete the old stuff. That way it doesn't, it doesn't mess with you. Okay. So, um, those are kind of all the editing tips you need to know about, about this. 
you should be able to move things around and um, and manipulate things pretty easily. Uh, change the text, change the colors, and things like that. Uh, it should stay aligned uh, as long as you don't do anything silly, like turn off the grid and, and, and move things around. Okay? So, um, that is um, a good start, I think. So, let's go ahead and try and make a change. I'm going to turn off my camera here. There you go. Sorry, it's getting really hot in this room. Uh, I don't know what's up with the air, but um, yeah, it says it's 70 degrees. It's dreaming. So, um, so let's go ahead and go through making um, one of these for the NRF 52840. We'll just get started and um, and walk through how you do that. There are some more things you'll need to know. Um, the first is I don't ever recommend that you start uh, in the diagram you really should figure out what you what you want to put in every cell first so i made this uh, spreadsheet i shared it with mike barella um, and uh, it's it's a, just a good place to start it kind of lets you type in what you want in terms of interrupts and port information and stuff like that um, i've got this one set up for the nrf 50 or sorry the nrf the uh, the feather m4 uh, this one's the Pi badge. I think the only thing that's going to be different are the things over here. Uh, the NeoPixel is different, and this has uh, some different stuff over here. Uh, the Pi Gamer will be about the same. And then uh, the, the M0 expresses the old data that was in there. And here I went ahead and created the beginnings of a, of a, um, a grid for the NRF52840. Uh, and you'll notice that I mark things green when I know they're right. I don't know much about this chip yet. I haven't done much research on it. Um, it's its data sheet is very different from the Atmel ones. Uh, but I will tell you where I got the data. Uh, I started with the uh, I started with the the schematic, uh, and that tells you a couple important things. It tells you uh, like for A zero right here that it's on physical pin twenty and it's on uh, port P zero zero four port zero uh, pin pad four. Uh, and then uh, it's on AN2. So that gives you a lot of what you need. In fact, it gives you almost everything that you need. Uh, a slightly easier way if you want to get it in the, in the order you want. Like the only thing this doesn't show you is the Arduino digital pin. So for that, I went into the uh, variant.cpp file, which tells me, okay, this is D14. Uh, it is P004. Uh, and then the other one I, I got that it is... Um, a and two. So that's where I got the, the data for this one that says it's pin 14, A0, A in two, P004, and the physical pin of 20. I don't yet know any information about uh, the power groups. I don't know if that exists on the NRF 840. So I'm just going to go ahead and show how to put in like this data. I did the VREF line and I did the, um, the uh, A0 line. I'll show you how to do those two and uh, I think it'll kind of show how to put it into the diagram, how to gather all this data. It's still a pain. I still don't know how to find the interrupts, and I don't think there are actually the same kind of circoms that there are on the uh, the um, at Melcha, the uh, the SAMD51. So um, let's go ahead and start with the diagram. So let's save this as uh, we'll call this um, uh, demo NRF52 just so I know that it's when I was doing the demo. So I saved it off as a separate file. Now I need to get this picture to put in the middle. Uh, so I'm gonna go to the fritzing.library. So this is the GitHub library. It's got all the fritzing parts. Here's the uh, NRF52840 FZPZ. Um, and if I look in here, you'll see it looks like uh, um, uh, Phil B made this. So I'm going to download it, and then I'm going to open up the, I'm going to do a show in folder. And right here is the Adafruit Feather NRF 52840FPFZPZ. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to the same thing .zip, okay? It's going to give me a warning. Yes, I really want to do that. Um, 
Yes, because it wants to. I've already done this before. <laughs> so, so here is the um, here's the zip file we just downloaded. We're going to open it, and you'll see that inside of here there is um, a breadboard file, an icon, a PCB, and a schematic, and these are all uh, SVG files. Uh, that's what we want to work with, and in our case, we want the breadboard one. Uh, we do have to extract it in order for us to be able to drag it into the diagram. So I'll extract that. I'll move it over here. And now I'm going to open up. Here's my Inkscape file. Here is my uh, just extracted SVG file. I'm just going to drag it over here and it will embed it directly into uh, my diagram. Okay. Uh, obvious problem is it's turned wrong. So we'll rotate it 90 degrees. We'll move it over here to the center here. And you'll see that it's obviously um, it is obviously not uh, aligned. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click on the uh, the larger one behind it, and you'll see where it says I'm on align. Let me show you how you get the align window up. So right here, you click align, and over here it asks what do you want to align it to. So I want to align it to the last selected, which I, I selected the blue one first and the black one second. I want to center it on the middle just like that now they are completely aligned together i want to click on the um the blue one and i want to resize it but i want to resize it while staying in position and while keeping the aspect ratio so uh, the way you do that is you hold down control and shift and then you drag these right so um, the shift uh, keeps you centered and the control keeps the aspect ratio and all I'm going to do is I'm going to grow this guy until he just fits right there. Close enough. I let go. Uh, I'm going to push it back one uh, in the stack here. I'm going to lower it. That'll put the black one back on top. I'll click on this picture and delete it. All right. So now I've got the beginnings of my diagram. Uh, I've got the, uh, the NRF52840. Um, in the center, the, the pins look pretty lined up to me. They're close enough. Of course, all the data is wrong because well, most of the data is wrong because it's the wrong chip. Okay. So um, now I'd start over here in the upper left. Uh, so uh, reset is still reset. I don't know what pin it is on the physical chip. Um, so I might as well go look at that. It is, I know where to find that. It is here in the diagram. Uh, I would need to find the switch that's connected to the uh, here's your reset pin. So somewhere over here it says reset. Here you go reset it is connected to physical pin 40 and it's P018. okay? So we'll come back over here. Um, the reset pin is connected to, I just forgot what I said. It's connected to uh, 40, okay? So the reset pin is right here. I'm going to go over, grab the text symbol, come over here. You'll see it automatically switch to that, say 40. It's staying centered just like I want it to. Uh, if I want to put in that it is P014, uh, is that it? P0, I lost it again. P018, okay? Uh, I can do that. So I need to uh, make some room. So I'll grab this reset and move it over. I'll take one of these beige ones, duplicate it. So I'm gonna, you can either right click and say duplicate or just hit control D. I'll drag it up here and you see it snapped in right where I want it. I can click here. Uh, this is P018. And now I'll come in, grab the reset, and drag it over like that. And there you go. My first pin is done. 3v3, I hope, doesn't actually need to have anything else added to it. Here's the, um, the reference voltage for the analog input. I did do that in uh, this diagram. So I look in here, and it says uh, it's VREF A. Uh, I don't know anything about the interrupt yet. And it's P031 on chip 12. So I'll go in, this is chip 12, and this is P031, double check that, yep, 
Um, and then since I don't know the interrupt information, I'll just delete it. Okay. Uh, VRFA is fine. I can slide that over, but um, it's in kind of the feature section. So that's that's look and feel. If you want to do that, you can. Um, but uh, that's that's a line done, right? So here's the ground pin. Uh, here's the A0 pin. If you look, it is still digital pin 14, A0, AN2. Uh, so this is wrong. So this should say AN2. And then um, there is no DAC on this pin, I don't think. So, so we'll do uh, this one we'll get rid of. And this one, I'm just going to drag it out of the way because we might need that color if we ever decide there is a DAC. Uh, I don't know anything about the interrupts yet. Um, so again, I'm going to drag it out of the way in case we need it later. And then uh, it's, it's gone. The next thing we know is it's P004 and pin 20. So we want uh, P004 and physical pin 20. And you'll see I'm just kind of walking my way down this, this grid, okay? Now, in the case of the NRF52840, I actually don't know what to put in here where all the circoms were, um, but that's you know that's something for Lamore to decide, uh, or Phil, or somebody to decide other than me. Um, as far as laying out the diagram, um, this should work. This should be uh, reasonably doable by by most folks. Um, anything else I need to show you on here? I think that's probably enough. It's been a long enough video. Um, I guess the last thing is how to export it. Uh, you'll notice that there's this this black box around the outside right here that I just moved by mistake. Um, so the reason it's there is if you export it just by saying file export PNG, it's clear, and that's never what people want because then they they can't see it. They always want a, black, a white background. Uh, so the reason for this white background is literally just so that when you export it, it's it's not clear. Um, so what you do is you click that rectangle, say export PNG image. It will pop up a dialog that looks like this. You make the width 1024, whatever you want. We'll call this uh, filled NRF 52 and hit export. And if we go take a look, uh, it should be there. So under pictures, Filled NRF 52. Oops. No, I didn't call it PNG. Sorry, hold on. Let's do that again. Click File Export NRF 52.png and hit Export. So now, Filled NRF 52. There it is. And here's what your file will look like, okay? So the grid's gone because it doesn't export that, um, but uh, it's got the changes we made. And it's got your blue image and everything else like that. So as, as I kind of said to Mike Barella the other day, the work in doing this layout really isn't in, um, it's not really in the, um, the artistry, right? So the, the work involved here is gathering the data. It's what, what information do you want in each cell, uh, where do you want to uh, where do you want to place it? How do you want to do the acronyms and things like that? The actual moving this stuff around and making it look good isn't that hard. Um, the only other things that I can uh, it might be worth showing you kind of real quickly how to change these split cells. Uh, on I honestly think that on uh, on feathers you probably always have the same split cells here. Uh, but if you're changing the text, it's pretty straightforward. You just uh, click on either of them, like this is 12 instead, you just say 12, or, oops, there you go. Uh, and you can change this one just by clicking there and saying that's A5. Uh, it's not, so let's fix that back to 14. If you want to change um, the colors uh, on this one, again, uh, I definitely recommend that you uh, use the control to get access to the part that you want. So hold down the control key and say, okay, I want to change, I want to change the purple, right? So there's the, the purple, and I want to make it, uh, I don't know, this awful color, okay? 
uh, it's not going to change the other parts. If you do end up um, splitting it open, uh, you can always regroup things. But uh, I think I think honestly this will this will work for you guys. I think that given that the, the the template exists and the the layout's kind of structured, I think you guys can do it. I didn't talk about the um, uh, these these are the PWM signals. Uh, there's not that much to talk about. Um, they will um, snap just like everything else. Um, and if you oh one thing I could say that is if you if you do want to like move things halfway and stuff, you can do that. Um, you just need to either turn off the grid. I think I did say that, uh, or you can actually hold down um, Alt or Shift. Shift. If you hold down Shift, it'll let you ignore the grid. Um, but you know that's all. These are all really minor things. If, if we're at this point, we've done really well, really well on the diagram. So I hope this helps. Uh, wherever you find this video, uh, there'll be a link to the um, the template file. And uh, if you have any questions, Bill at atmakers.org. I'll be happy to help. Bye, guys.